In this video, we're going to look at how equilibrium changes as a function of temperature and look at the Van't Hoff equation, which tells us how the equilibrium constant changes as a function of temperature. So let's start by looking at the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, which as promised in that video is going to be used here. So that says that the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy divided by temperature uh, with respect to temperature at constant pressure is equal to the negative enthalpy divided by T squared. So this is true for any kind of Gibbs energy and any analogous kind of enthalpy. But for our purposes here, we're specifically interested in the standard Gibbs energy of reaction. So over here we have the standard uh, enthalpy of reaction. Okay, so some equations that we have for the Gibbs energy of reaction, the standard Gibbs energy of reaction. We have that delta R G naught of T, making it clear that this is a function which has a explicit temperature dependence, is equal to minus R T log K P of T. So our equilibrium constant here, K P, is a function of temperature only as well. <clears throat> okay, so if we solve, uh, take this here, and then we solve uh, for log of kp, isolating that value. We have log kp is equal to minus delta rg naught of t divided by over t. Actually, let me put a let me put a minus r in front here just so this is even more clear. Okay, so we're gonna have minus r, and then in parentheses I'm going to have delta r g naught of t divided by t. Okay, so you notice that this quantity here is this quantity which is being differentiated. So the standard Gibbs energy of reaction divided by temperature. So it's it's derivative with respect to temperature. So that the derivative of this with respect to temperature times minus r will give us the derivative of the log of the equilibrium constant with respect to, to temperature. So let's write out in uh, mathematical terms what those words mean. So that means that the partial derivative of the log of our equilibrium constant with respect to temperature, again saying at constant pressure, is going to be equal to, um, and this equilibrium constant is a function of temperature only, so this actually becomes a total derivative. So we have d log kp dt is equal to, um, putting in that substitution uh, where we have the minus r in there, this is going to be, uh, if you follow through that algebra, um, gives energy, or the enthalpy standard enthalpy of reaction divided by RT squared. And my bad over here, this should be one over R. Okay, one over R. So let's see what this means in terms of our extent of reaction, how that changes in response to uh, this, this uh, temperature dependence of our equilibrium constant. So if we have an enthalpy of reaction, a standard enthalpy of reaction, which is greater than zero. That means we have an endothermic reaction. So for an endothermic reaction, that means that if our temperature goes up, so temperature goes up, that means the natural log of the equilibrium constant is going to go up. And if you analyze our uh, expressions from previous videos about the Gibbs energy of reaction, that means that if our natural log of our equilibrium constant goes up, that means the Gibbs energy of reaction is going to go down, and thus the reaction is going to become more spontaneous and more favorable. So thus, as a result, the extent of reaction is going to go up and the reaction is going to push forward. So does this make sense in the context of Le Chatelier's principle? So the system has been perturbed by increasing the temperature, and this system absorbs heat, so 
and the system moves its reaction forward in order to absorb the extra temperature, the extra heat from the surroundings. So that makes sense because the, the system has responded to try to absorb some heat and decrease the temperature of the surroundings. So the system has moved in response to try to minimize the effect of that temperature increase. So that's how Le Chatelier's principle works with respect to temperature. And then analogously, if the enthalpy of standard enthalpy of reaction is less than zero, you have an exothermic reaction. And that's just changing the sign here. So that means if you have the temperature go up, then the natural log of the equilibrium constant goes down and our Gibbs energy of reaction will go up and thus our extent of reaction will decrease and the for the reaction will push itself in reverse. So the reaction, the reaction releases heat when it goes forward. So in response to the increased temperature of the surroundings, it goes backwards and tries to absorb some heat and decrease that temperature increase. Okay, so now we can do some separation of variables and try to solve this in terms of the equilibrium constant as a function of temperature. So we're going to multiply both sides by dt here and then integrate. So that's going to give us the integral of ln kp at t1 to ln kp at t2 of d ln kp of t, which equals integral of the other side it's going to be integrated from T1 to T2 of standard enthalpy of reaction divided by R T prime squared. Well, actually I have T1. I can use I can use a regular T here. I don't have a, a T in my limits. So R T squared and then integrated with respect to DT. Okay, so our first, our left side here is simple. We're just integrating, uh, basically, it's like the integral from dx from x1 to x2. So this gives us natural log of kpt2 minus natural log of kpt1. Using the property of logarithms, we can combine those, and we can get the natural log of the equilibrium constant at temperature 2 divided by natural log of, divided by equilibrium constant at temperature of t1. That is going to be equal to, and assuming that the uh, standard reaction enthalpy is not changing very much over this temperature range, we can get the following equation, that that's equal to the negative enthalpy change of reaction divided by gas constant times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Um, this should look very similar to the clop iron equation because the clop iron equation also used the Gibbs Helmholtz equation to get how the uh, log of uh, pressure changed with respect to temperature and phase changes. So, this is a very analogous to the clop iron equation if you've seen that video. Um, as I said, this requires the assumption that delta H of reaction is approximately constant over the range T1 to T2. Okay, so this gives us uh, the Van't Off equation, which tells us how the natural log of the equilibrium constant changes over temperature ranges. And then if you're interested in a specific um, equilibrium constant, then you can take E to the both sides and then multiply by one of them and see how it changes. And this tells us, um, again, that the natural log of the equilibrium constant is going to be proportional to 1 over t, as we can see in this, this dependence here. Okay, so um, one last thing that we can say is if we assume that we're over a larger temperature range where the enthalpy of reaction, the standard enthalpy of reaction, is not going to be constant, then what we can use 
is just leave this integral with uh, delta h in there in the integrand. And then what we can say is that over large range of delta t, instead of simplifying to this nice equation down here, we're just going to leave the integral unsolved. And we're going to have that the log of kp of t is going to equal log kp of t1. So you know the int, you know the equilibrium constant at one temperature. You're trying to find it at another. So that's going to be log kp of t1 plus the integral from t1 to t of your enthalpy of reaction, which we're saying has some explicit temperature dependence now divided by r times t prime squared integrated with respect to t prime. So two equations here. As we've said, we get the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant, or of its logarithm. And it's approximately proportional to the inverse of the temperature. Um, how the reaction responds to increases or decreases in temperature depends on the sign of the enthalpy, whether it's endothermic or exothermic, consistent with Le Chatelier's principle. And assuming that the enthalpy is constant over that range, you get the event off equation. And assuming it changes over that range, you get the slightly more complicated equation here, which will require some numerical integration of your enthalpy of reaction over that temperature range.